Hey, what's up, guys? Scott, I see you here. How's it going? Um, yeah, we're, I just figured I'd do kind of an impromptu live stream tonight and talk a little bit about the Omega releases that they announced earlier this week. Kind of share my thoughts, ask what you guys think about that, and uh, feel free to you know ask questions, place your thoughts, put your comments in the chat, and uh, let me let me show you what I'm wearing today, actually. I've got a watch that I'm borrowing. Uh, let me take it off and put it up in front of the camera. Um, and you're welcome to shout out in the chat what you're wearing today as well, if you're interested. There we go. Uh, I am wearing a radio mirror that um, I'm borrowing from a good friend of mine. Uh, this has an eight-day movement. It's mostly the plate in the back. But it's a big watch. It's a 45 millimeter diameter radio mirror. And we've got a properly sized hand wind eight day movement with thermally blued hands. It's really, it's really a cool watch. Um, Giorgio the chef. Okay. So Kevin, what's up? Uh, username is an inside joke. Yeah. Uh, nice. And, and you're wearing a SRPA 21. Awesome. Stanley in Pittsburgh wearing the blue tank must. Hey, here is my tank solo Cartier friends. <laughs> oh, we got someone tuning in from Malaysia. Awesome. Well, thanks for tuning in today, guys. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about the Omega novelties. I'm going to share my screen here. Oh, we got someone wearing a Proplof. Hey, so... I got to ask you then, Cruising Gypsy, what you think about the, what is it called? The Ultra Deep? <laughs> so, uh, seeing as that you're a Proplof owner. And uh, Sayaz and Basil is wearing the Caliber 400 from Oris 41.5. Yeah, awesome watch. Really awesome watch. All right, let's share the screen here. Uh, so I've just got their website up. And let's go through a couple of their novelties. There's the Ultra Deep, which in my opinion, I don't know, tell me what you guys think about this, but it seems to be a release that nobody was asking for or was, I mean, we wanted them to update the planet ocean, right? Not give us something that's incredibly, I don't want to say unpractical, but who dives, you know, and who takes a dive watch when they dive? I think this is just an exercise in, you know, what we can do. And it's, you know, what is $11,000 for that? Uh, we, we have a new Seamaster colorway, which looks to be kind of like an olive green color. Uh, I know uh, I was talking with Homer earlier today. I don't know if he's in the chat yet, but he was like, Bruce, I have a feeling that you really like that green Seamaster. And I said, yeah, I do like it. But my problem is I already have, you know, the best green dial diver, <laughs> in my opinion. So I'm not tempted by the green uh, Seamaster, but you know it's nice to see them kind of expanding that line a little bit. Uh, let me shout out a few of you that are also tuning in. Mike is wearing the SLA 051. Absolutely adore that watch. Uh, so Jason, Seamaster 007, excellent. We got we got a lot of Omega wearers today. Tom for watches. Joe's wearing the blue Monta Atlas. Nice, nice. So <laughs> definitely not copying Rolex. Are you talking about these Aquaterra in the colorful dials? Let's let's click on those real quick. So here's my opinion on this, guys. But um, Rolex is rarely, if ever, the first brand to do something. Uh, but once they decide to do it, they usually do a really good job. And it sets a trend and other brands are, you know, trying not necessarily to copy, but emulate the idea. And they use Rolex kind of as a standard to meet or exceed. So I look at these and do I see some um, OP41? Not really. Uh, just the idea that you can take something that, uh, you know, is a sharp model, kind of an entry level piece something with water resistance and do something that is almost obnoxious in the colorway. Uh, something that kind of reminds you of decades past, like I see you know, 50 years ago, some of these colors, I mean, back in the seventies, there were quite some 
bold colors on these watches. So anyways, I, 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 I'm kind of reminded of the OP 41 just or I guess the other sizes as well, just with the fact that they're, all, they're a really vibrant, different color. And Rolex proved over the past two years that um, that can be very well received in the watch market. So I wouldn't say that Omega is copying, but they're taking a similar idea. And I think Omega is really close with these. They've retooled the bracelet. It kind of looks a little bit more like a president bracelet. It's it's more rounded. The links look shorter than they were before. And then we have a sunray dial with, I believe, a PVD application for the color. So no more plank, no more texture, no more color matched date wheel, which eh, I don't know how I feel about that right now. And unfortunately, no jumping hour like the 41.5 millimeter Aquaterra. This will have the caliber 8,800, which is still a good movement, but uh, not my preference. I like some of these colors quite a bit, uh, especially this kind of reddish color. Uh, I like the slate blue. Those are probably my two favorite, but I think they missed a big opportunity. And let me know what you guys think about this, but they didn't update the clasp. I think we've been waiting for them to come out with an adjustable clasp for the Aquaterra. And they went to the trouble of reprofiling the links in the bracelet, but they put a butterfly on it. Ah, come on, Omega. You're so close. You're so close. Um, as Sam Ray, Sam Ray likes the terracotta red. Okay, so that's that's the color name. Awesome. Michael's wearing Certina. Excellent. Um, so Ryan's world, how long does planning, retooling and production take? What's to say Omega wasn't already planning and we just, and just couldn't release as early. That takes time. Well, I mean, they've been making adjustable clasps for years now. So, I mean, they, if they wanted to do it, uh, I'm sure they could have done it. Uh, it's not like, I don't think they've thought about it. I'm sure they have. They've just made the decision to stick with the butterfly. Giorgio thinks they're a bit too feminine. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we're moving into an era where you can get away with some with some real color, no matter what gender you are. Red is the best. Yeah, red's my favorite too. The terracotta. Yeah, I I hope I hope to see these in person. Um, I'm going out to Pennsylvania in let's see about a month from now. And I'm going to an authorized dealer that I've bought my Speedmaster from. The, uh, the the dealer is called Brent o. Miller Jewelers in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And we're having a meetup there in the store on the 14th, which is a Thursday from 5 to 7 p.m. And so I guess if, if any, I know some of you are planning to go, but um, I'm hoping that they get at least some of these new releases in the store. So when we're at the event, we can look at the, you know, these, these colors in person, we can see the speed master. We can look at, you know, some of the new releases and just see how they are. Cause ah, you guys know how it is. We can criticize the renders. We can criticize the announcements, but once you see something in person, it's either, yeah, this is better than I thought, or, Oh my goodness, <laughs> not what I expected. You know what I'm talking about? So that's a good comment, Sam Ray. Yeah. Re oh, a reverso blue dial. Fire. That's a fire watch. Ah, uh, YZ80, what's up? Yeah, uh, he'll be at the event too in Pennsylvania. Awesome. All right, yeah, so let's uh, let's look at some more of these. Uh, they did a 34. Um, I showed my wife, not interested in any of these. Uh, <laughs> but my wife is rarely interested in uh, the watches that I, I show her. But I, I don't know. This picture looks great. This doesn't look like a, a render over here with this kind of uh, champagne silver off, you know, off white, off yellow type dial. It looks like they've retained those lovely triangular faceted markers, the applied logo, uh, the great finish on the hands. That looks really good. Um, I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but I would love to have a matching watch with my spouse, you know, if, if my spouse liked that's <laughs> so the 34 millimeter version. So they're saying earthy tones, earthy tones, Atlantic blue, bay green, sandstone. I guess this one is the sandstone. It's pretty handsome. And then saffron and terracotta. 
Yeah, there's the 8800 caliber. It's a good movement. Uh, I just prefer the jumping hour to the quick set date myself. But where do you guys want to go next? <laughs> we've talked about we've talked about the Aquaterra. I like what I'm seeing, but man, they needed to update that clasp. And I'm not sure what I think about the uh, the white date disc because they did go to the trouble of color matching with the other Aquaterra models. And then um, what was the last? Oh, the movement. I would have liked to see the 8912 instead of the 8800. But those are my thoughts. Hey, Silverback's going to be there in Lancaster. Awesome. Jonathan, greetings from Connecticut. Awesome. Great. Circle window done right. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I think it looks okay. I, my wife didn't like it, but, you know, it, it adds a little bit of reflection and visual interest, I think. All right, yeah, let's go to the Speedmaster. Let's do that next. Speedmaster 57. Um, that's a good profile from the side. I like that sweep, that architecture there. Then you get the step with the bezel and the box crystal. Looks like there's a pretty beefy case back for the display on that, but nice short links. And then, I mean, they're, they're hitting us with the colors. So we, we have sun ray kind of fume, um, green, obviously black, the blue, the red. Yeah. Ah, let's click on that real quick. So $8,600, pretty comparable to the, to the Speedmaster price, you know, the classic moon watch and uh, super sticker. Hey, appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you very much. So available soon in stores. I don't know what soon is. Is that this month? Is that, uh, you know, next week? I guess we'll find out, but hopefully it's pretty quick. I like how they've done the alpha hands here on the uh, hours and minutes sub register and how it's also matched on the, uh, the running seconds. It's nice. We have a blacked out date wheel. That's good matching the color on the outside track where the hash marks are. But this is where it's money is the back. I mean, check out that radial finish spiraling out that arabesque pattern emanating from your balance, free sprung balance, full balance bridge. Love that architecture. You guys can see the silicon wheel and uh, there's your column wheel right there. Uh, pretty nice jewels. Let me compare this uh, Panerai real quick. So kind of a similar idea, but obviously the Omega does it in a very sexy way. This I think is attractive and sharp, but it just doesn't have the visual interest that this Speedmaster 57 has with how they've executed that. I think that looks really nice. And, you know, just how thin that little area of stainless steel on the case back is. Uh, so most of the real estate on the back is just looking at that gorgeous movement. And I like the fact that we have, you know, open spring bar holes here. A lot of brands, a lot of micro brands these days are doing the quick release system. And uh, I don't know, kind of like the old style myself. So <clears throat> yeah, it's it's going to be a meta certified movement. It's pretty comparable in price to the moon watch. We have a couple different colors and it's not massive. 40.5 millimeters in size. Yeah, YZ80 says he like uh, he still likes the old speedy racers. Those those are quite a value, I believe. I've seen them in the 2000s, you know, on the secondary market. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't looked recently, but you know, those were a really good way to get into the Speedmaster. Hey, Rob, what's up, Robert? How you doing? I popped in on your live stream yesterday for just the tail end of it. Um, well, it's good to see you, man. I hope you're doing well over there in Michigan. G-Man Greg, hey, what's up? Good to see you. Good to see you guys. So is this a new movement? Um, I can't remember if they've placed it in one of the models before or not, to be honest with you. Uh, let's see what they say here. We'll go to the description. Um, okay. The 9906, they don't say if it's brand new. We'll just scroll down. Silicon balance spring, and yeah, we looked at all that. Yeah, I don't know if it's if it's brand new or not, or if it's just kind of an evolution of something that they've done previously, but it, it's not been a common 
uh, movement in their movements. Michael, checking into the chat. Love Omega. Did I miss your review of the new Aqua Terras? Would you mind commenting on the colors being offered? So we chatted a little bit about it in the beginning because um, that's my favorite of <laughs> the new releases or new announcements this year, Michael. Um, I, I like them. I think Omega teased me. Right? They, they, got, they got close, but they didn't give us a new clasp in that re retooled uh, link system for the bracelet that kind of looks a little bit more like a president. I like the colors. I like the fact that they're bold. Um, I, I wish they would have put the 8912 caliber in instead of the 8800. But on the whole, I think um, I think they're going to be really attractive in person. And I'm sure, you know, I'm going to be nitpicking and complaining here on uh, on YouTube and in, you know, Discord and, and different chats. And then once I see one in person, I'll probably go, man, I, I want one. You know, that just seems to be the case with me. Uh, but yeah, I, I like the, the terracotta red. I think that's the most attractive color. So, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, Michael. I appreciate it. This is a good question. Artificial jewels or real, um, artificial they're synthetic, but they're still, you know, really excellent. Um, uh, consistent with the color and everything there's a control in that. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're going to be synthetic rubies. Hello, aus Deutschland. Uh, guten Abend. It's got to be really late for you in Germany, but thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. And Kilbake Lee, I hopefully I didn't butcher that. First time to the live. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Yeah, put your put your question in the chat, Henry uh, Henny Chestnut, and I'll see if I can uh, help you out. All right. So yeah, let's continue. I I like the different colors. I think I'm. I'm not sure which colorway I like the most. I'd probably say the basic with the sandwich dial. Looks like there's a little bit of texture. You can see some grit there. Uh, color match date wheel. I think that's a good choice. Yeah. I think most people will enjoy the Speedmaster 57 when it comes to these releases the most. Because, yeah, it's expensive, but it's, again, it's not too different from the Moonwatch, which sells very well, um, but it's smaller in overall um, profile. And it's the original design when it comes to the Speedmaster. Matty G, greetings from Singapore. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. Salt Lake Watch Collector. Hey, so you're you're local to me. I'm in, uh, I'm wearing my Utah Jazz shirt going to the game this Saturday, uh, Submariner. What's, what's that in reference to? I mean, I got one right here. Rob has to be honest. He has not looked at the new Omega at all. Well, we're just kind of going through it right now, man. Um, basically they did a couple gold moon watches. <laughs> they did, a couple of tweaks to the constellation and then they gave us a couple new aqua terras in this speedmaster 57 and a ridiculous um ultra deep variation of the planet ocean so we're just kind of going through and talking about it tonight doing good doing really good yeah glad you're tuned in thank you okay all right let's continue here we've looked at the speedmaster let's look at some of the other releases um uh, let's just go back to the home page here. Novelties 2022. And this is how it goes. It seems like uh, we always, as watch enthusiasts, it seems to be a trend. We'll see something. We'll go, eh, that's, that's no good. They should have done this. They should have done that. They should have, you know, they made this terrible mistake. And then by the time the watches are coming out in the fall or whenever they're released, we're getting excited about it and ready to part with our money. Uh, when I first saw the Air King back in 2016 from Rolex, quote, I said, gag me with a spoon. That is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And then it became one of my all-time favorite designs from Rolex. So I'm trying to keep that in mind. I'm not super enthused about these novelties this year, but I'm sure my tune will change later on. Let's take a look at the ultra deep guys, and I'll maximize this a little bit more so you guys can see it. Um, so yeah, check out. The ultra deep, it's nice that they've given us some options here in terms of dial and bezel color, strap versus bracelet. But again, 
I mean, I, I think we were kind of hoping for a planet ocean refresh and in a way they've done that, but <laughs> it's, it's like no, nobody's been asking for a watch with 6,000 meters of water resistance. I mean, it's really cool that it can go that deep, but this is a 45 and a half millimeter diameter watch that I'm sure, you know, is just stupid on wrist. It's probably, probably you could wear it and it's surprisingly comfortable for such a big watch, but nonetheless, it's still a big watch, big watch. Uh, and it's expensive too, but yeah, let's, let's go through the colors. I really like this one, to be honest with you guys. It's, it's the least Rolex X, uh, I think, cause I mean, obviously some comparisons will be made to the deep sea with this ultra deep 6,000 meters. We have the 12, three, six, and nine Arabics done in color match with the ceramic bezel insert. Uh, let's look at the back. Obviously no display case back here. Um, yeah, it's a master chronometer. That's nice, but check out the price, $11,600. I'm sure you can negotiate a little bit of a discount. Yeah, YZ80, they are big. It's, I mean, the, you know, the, what is it? 43 millimeter Planet Ocean. That's already a big watch. And if I remember right, it was like 16 and a half millimeters in height. And that was a 600 meter diver. This is 6,000 meters and uh i can't remember the exact dimension i thought i read it in a review let's see if it's here in terms of height but 22 millimeter lugs they probably won't advertise how tall it is on their on their page um yeah let's just take a quick look i mean that looks great take a look at that white ceramic that looks very sharp and we have white gold markers uh which is really good yeah, this is the movement I enjoy. The 8912 jumping hour feature, Meta certified. Yeah, I mean, take a look at that. They, they'll not show a side profile uh, because it's got to be comically thick. I'm guessing it's like 17, 18 millimeters at least in height. Um, I don't want to download a product sheet. It might be on that, but. I mean, it's kind of cool. What do you guys think about this? Is it Ricky says the NFL lineman would have large enough wrists for this watch. Uh, you know, I, I love the NFL personally. Um, I'm a fan of the 49ers. And whenever I watch like player interviews after games, I'm always looking at their wrists like, all right, who's a watch guy? Who's not? And it's funny because sometimes after some of these players get their great contract, you know, they're getting paid at the top of their position. You'll notice their attire start to change a little bit. And then oftentimes you'll see nicer watches and a lot of them go with, uh, with precious metal Rolex. I know Jimmy Garoppolo, our quarterback last year, he, he wasn't, he never wore a watch that I really recognized until he bought a day date in yellow gold. And it just looked, Oh my goodness. It looked awesome. So, uh, yeah, my general manager, John Lynch, he wears a, a Panerai, but it's not the radio mirror. The coach wears Hublot quite frequently. But I was like, uh, yeah, I was like seeing who's wearing what, who's a watch guy, who's not. Cowboy Swami, what's up? I wish it had circular markers. Yeah, but that's the planet ocean, though. That's the planet ocean. They, they've done the rectangular and the Arabics for quite a while, so... I, I don't know. It might be too similar to a Seamaster if they were to break with tradition. Okay, yeah, about 18 millimeters. That would sound appropriate, I think. And no liar lugs. Eh, it kind of looks like liar lugs. Not dramatic liar lugs. A little bit. See a little bit of the twisted uh, kind of flare there. But yeah, that's that's a big watch. I... Again, once I see one in person, I'll probably think it's the coolest thing ever. I like the, the bold color, accent color. We have a Fume dial. This one reminds me the most of the Deep Sea, just with their bold use of an accent color and the blue transition, the black ceramic. Um, that's cool, but I don't know. I guess this hobby isn't very practical if we think about it. We try to make it out like, yeah, we're getting a really practical watch. It's you know, going to be accurate. It's going to be versatile. But at the end of the day, 
these are just shiny pieces of metal that mesmerize us with, you know, telling time mechanically. I get the love, but <laughs> this one, especially this ultra deep, just is not a very practical piece, I guess. And I was just expecting a planet ocean refresh. Yeah, Rob, I'm with you on that. Um, I told my watchmaker to, to let me know if he wants to sell that orange bezel 2,500, uh, that, that I have a good friend that would want to buy it likely. And, uh, he said he'd let me know, but I wouldn't hold my breath because he wears it quite a bit. I think he likes wearing it. It's a really great, you know, really great one. And that one has the open six and the open nine, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. Aficionado high end. I don't think they do either, which is kind of a important dimension for a lot of us. You know, I think we can pull off a large watch, but you know, it, it'd be nice, be nice to see that right up off the bat. Yeah, it is definitely over-engineered. <laughs> and who is the target market? I don't know on this one. I'm not sure. And Amit likes, it's how I like Panerai. I really like Panerai too. Um, they, they have maybe too many watches in their product catalog. They retain value pretty well for the most part, at least all the ones that I like. Like I was, I was looking at this one here. Let me minimize um, that screen a little bit. I was looking at this and it's, I think close to 9,000 retail. <laughs> I looked on the secondary market to see if I could snag a deal. And it's like eight grand. It, it does not appreciate or depreci depreciated very much. Oh my goodness. I have missed some super chats. I've just been talking. Hey, let me highlight these real quick. Let me scroll up and uh, find these. Okay, uh, BT, BT, let me find your comment here. For some reason, I'm having a hard time finding it. I can, I can let me read it out though. Um, So BT says, Bruce, I just joined to catch the discussion of Jimmy G's day date. <laughs> if you had mentioned the 49ers in the title, I would have joined sooner. Uh, yeah. So BT lives in California and I really want to come out to uh, Santa Clara and catch a game. And if we do, we've got to meet up. We've got to have lunch, maybe go to Topper's Jewelry, you know, have a good time. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe if we go early enough, we can catch one of the players practicing and I'll bring a pen. Maybe they can sign uh, a jersey or a pair of shoes or something. That would be awesome. But yeah, I'd love to meet you in person, BT. I appreciate that uh, super chat very much. And here's another one, wristwatch addiction. Thought I'd want rid of the helium release valve until it's gone. Now I wish it was on the 6,000. Isn't that funny? Uh, we kind of call it the helium release wart, right? Because it, it's just you know, it's normally up here by the 10 o'clock, right? But um, I don't know. What do you guys think? I kind of like that it's not there. I mean, it's a little bit more impressive that you get all this water resistance without the valve. So um, that's kind of funny. You think that uh, it should have been retained. Uh, I don't know who, who makes these decisions and and why. And there's another super. Oh, Stanley. There you are. Technically, the new Globemasters are not part of this release, but I think they should still be considered part of the new, more colorful direction Omega is taking. Yeah, let's let's go talk about the Globemasters because they're not they're not well received. I think in the United States market, they're a lot more popular in other markets of the globe. And I've reviewed one that has that texturized dial. <laughs> It was nice. It was really, really nice. So uh, let's, yeah, let's go. Um, let's go do that now. I think we've talked about the ultra deep enough. 41 millimeter. So here it is. It's a design that they've done for decades now. And, um, you know, it's kind of the integrated style. We have ceramics in the bezel with some of the models, not all of the models. And yeah, so I think this is a new colorway. I think this is a new color. Maybe all of them are slight variations on what they've done previously. Um, and if I remember right, they did the 8,800 movement and now it's an 89. Good. Excellent. 
So it's not the 8912, uh, the latest and greatest, but it's still a really good base. Uh, I enjoy the 8900. Again, I take a, a jumping hour any day of the week over a quick set date. And some of you disagree with me, and that's fine. I can be right. You can be wrong. <laughs> and uh, we'll call it good. But uh, is, I kind of like this. Yeah, so this one is ceramic. We have the applied markers. They have this good flare to the finish. And depending on the version, like this one just looks like it's all polished and blue. But some of the other variations, you can see uh, brush and polish. And let's see if we still have that same shot in this one. Yeah, so you guys can see there's the nice brush work on the top and then the polish on that flared angle. And this is the dial that I reviewed. Um, it was probably like a year and a half ago. And it really looked good. Caught the light. Well, Macon can do some really nice dial work. That is for sure. Um, so I don't think this is going to be the most well-received. And 8,700 with the two-tone, uh, it's not too bad. Some precious metal, not a lot of precious metal. And that's also another thing. Um, <laughs> the premiums that brands charge for adding just a small amount of gold it's funny because if you actually took the weight of the gold and looked at how much it's worth per carat, it's not even close. And I think a couple people have done, uh, you know, in detail work on weighing out what the bracelet, how much gold's in the bracelet, the case, the crown, the bezel, you know, and it came out to like $5,000 worth of gold in a watch that Rolex charges, you know, close to 40 grand for. So, <laughs> I mean, the premiums on Precious metal is up there, but isn't there just something alluring about that metal? You know, it's warm and it's soft and it holds a great polish. And uh, yeah, there's something really attractive about it. So I don't know. These aren't the most exciting. What do you guys think? Big fan. Oh, hey, what's up? Bearded watch in North Carolina. Big fan of that burgundy dial. Let's click on that burgundy dial. Let's see. Okay, so this is probably the same 8700 because we do have some of that red gold. And I believe in the past they've done the sunray from the star, but it looks like they're emanating that sunray from the hand stack, which I think is nice. Again, color match date wheel, that makes a big difference. And wouldn't it be something if instead of white, it was like, you know, matching that red gold, that Sedna gold? That would be pretty attractive, I think. Yeah, Sedna Gold, Master Chronometer. I, I think eventually this is going to be a little bit more popular in the United States market than it is right now. Um, I like the fact that their alligator is set within rubber, so it's it's better for longevity and wearing, being sweat resistant. You're not going to destroy your leather as quickly. So that's, you know, that's nice attention to detail. I've seen that in Oblo. <clears throat> Whoa, excuse me. <laughs> I've seen that in Hublot. I've seen it in Tag and a few different LVMH products, but um, it's nice to see it here from the Swatch Group. Oh, there's your, okay, BT. There's your super chat. I couldn't find it, but uh, yeah, I appreciate that very much. And yeah, hundred percent. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's do the game. <sighs> I want to see Trey Lance, man. I want to see Trey Lance. And he was wearing Cartier. He had an iced out Santos that he wore on draft day. And I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of iced out watches, especially on the aftermarket. But it looked pretty sweet. Gold hit. Wow, 2050 announced today. Premium premiums to go up. That's something we can always count on. <laughs> Retail price up and up and up. Are you looking at Globe Masters or Constellations there? Did I misspeak? This is a Constellation. Did I say Globe Master? I probably did. I probably have been flubbing it the past like five, 10 minutes. We're looking at Constellations. Uh, the Globe Master is a little different. Thanks for uh, putting me straight there. Steve's favorite was the Seaweed Master because it's green. Yeah. So here's my thing. I think a lot of brands go the safe route and they do more of the olive tone. And I wish more brands would go like emerald green, candy green, bright apple, very verdant grass. You know, I wish brands would get a little bit more bold 
when they use green and the <laughs> seaweed master. Oh, what a name. You guys crack me up sometimes, your your comments. Yeah, well, let's let's talk about it. Let's go to the Seamaster. Um, let's see the new color. And let me maximize the screen a little. So we've got green bezel. We have the green ceramic wave dial laser engraved. Those really look good. Very dynamic in various light. We have color match date wheel. I like to see that. Here's the back, still the 8800 caliber. Um, I think the big criticism when it comes to the Seamaster is the fact that this bracelet you know, doesn't taper. And I know it's only 20 millimeters in lug width, but it can get kind of cumbersome. It can get hefty, especially with that large clasp. I like the fact that it's adjustable, but this on the bracelet, eh, maybe I'm just used to all this taper with my watches. Like here's the sub. Um, but I've noticed that sometimes that bracelet can really add to it, but everything's the same in terms of the movement being master chronometer, um, you know, certified by the Swiss federal Institute of metrology. I don't think they've tweaked anything else other than just giving us a different dial color and bezel color. And this picture makes it look a little bit more green than the other renders. And if it was more vibrant, I would like it more. Um, seaweed master. I'm always going to think about that. <laughs> Thanks to you guys. Where's the valve? Does it even have one? So uh, the Seamaster does, but the Ultra Deep does not have the helium release valve or helium release wart. And <laughs> the Philadelphia Eagles diver. Do you think so? Eh, I guess it's pretty close, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty close. Rob says, I'm sure many will love that green. Uh, Rob doesn't as much. Yeah, it's it's not my favorite, but I'm glad that at least they're coming out with a little bit more. When they did the Tokyo and the Beijing edition, I know we, we kind of got excited about that white dial blue bezel. So it's nice to see something that's not a limited edition or a special release but a standard production version. And again, the price is the same at 5,400 full retail on the bracelet. And I believe there's not much of a difference getting the strap. Let's see how much it is on the strap. Yeah, $300 difference. And I really like these rubber straps. These are, these are really good straps. And it looks like they've color matched it pretty well with the bezel and the dial. Yeah, let's, hey, let's congratulate MM10. He got an Explorer and a santos i mean what a horological week so big congrats mm10 in california that's that's pretty amazing i think getting it into natural light will do the green more justice yeah yeah I, i'm probably being overly harsh here uh because that's the thing when you see it in person especially in sunlight and you're outside of the led showroom uh, it just takes on a different factor. And so hopefully it's a little bit more vibrant than kind of the drab color that's being displayed in the renders. But yeah, I agree with you. I do. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing to get an Explorer and a Cartier. What a week you're having. That's amazing. Amazing. So BT says he loves the rubber straps, but I don't think it looks great in the green. I do think that the green watch will probably look pretty good in the metal. Yeah, I think it will too. I've owned three of the Seamasters, flipped them all because the bracelet is too uncomfortable and heavy. I've owned the chrome and the white. I bought the white from Rob. He gave me a great deal on it. And yeah, I've flipped them both. <laughs> Every once in a while, I miss them. Like if I'm editing and I'm dropping in a picture or a clip uh, relating to something that I'm talking about, or I see it posted on social media, I'll go, ooh, yeah, I kind of miss that watch. But then, you know, it it is a pretty hefty watch on the bracelet. I'll leave it at that. Thoughts on the new gold Speedmasters? Yeah, let's go take a look at those right now. So I had the opportunity to try on the white gold version. I mean, it's been out for a little while. 
at my local authorized dealer. And yeah, it was hefty. It was awesome. Um, I mean, essentially it's the same dimensions as the new moon watch and stainless steel, same bracelet style. Um, I have not seen this rubber strap that must be new, but yeah, that green, Ooh, that green looks good. I kind of like this one with the champagne dial. It's not quite a, you know, uh, I guess you could say a, a panda, but similar, right? So let's start with the green. We'll go full bracelet. Uh, what's the price? I'm going to guess over 40. Oh, I'm way high. 34, 800. Um, I, I do like that. It, it does seem to be a little bit more emerald than the Seamaster green, but maybe it's just because I'm seeing the warm tones of the gold, the accents. And if we take a look at the back, it's still the 3861 and they didn't place any gold bridges or anything in there. So I guess that's a little bit disappointing because I know they've done that in the past with full precious metal models. When I reviewed the Lapis Lazuli Seamaster 300, they placed some red gold as part of the bridge component. Uh, and that was just a nice detail. It's a small amount of gold, but I think when you're buying a $30,000 watch, you'd want a little bit of differentiation between the movement that's in the seven, $8,000 variation. But maybe that's just me being a little bit snobbish there. But yeah, moonshine, gold, bracelet, and case, 42 millimeters. We have uh, 50 meters water resistance. So, I mean, you'd be safe to wash that under the tap from time to time, <laughs> get caught in the rain. I would not go swimming with this or anything like that. Not that I think many people would do that. Ooh, yeah, look at that picture. That, that looks nice. We've got the sun ray. The sunken registers with the guilloche work. Yeah, that looks good. Applied markers, a little bit of loom, probably not too functional. Yeah, I bet that's money in person. And the fact that, I mean, we talked about the day date earlier with Jimmy Garoppolo wearing that watch. They're getting harder to get, you know. Just a few years ago, you could usually find a 40 millimeter day date. Um, you know, in the case at an authorized dealer and not anymore. So I guess it's nice that other brands are coming out with watches that I would say would be competitors. I mean, this is not necessarily the same olive green that Rolex uses, but it's a similar price segment, full gold bracelet. Um, obviously you've got the lovely history of the Speedmaster, and I like this new case. I like the way it wears. So, uh, yeah, I think that looks really attractive. Let's take a look at the difference in premium if you're not getting the bracelet. Wow, so it's about 10 grand for the bracelet. I would have thought it would be um, a little bit less expensive, but yeah, I don't know. I think the bracelet makes the watch though, don't you think? I think it does. Yeah, let's take a look at this. Maybe there's some awesome pictures on this site, but yeah. Oh. I guess if you're going full gold, maybe you want to be a little bit more ostentatious and, and show off that gold tone. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I think this is the one for me. Look at that blacked out applied logo. Oh yeah. And then the AU done hit in there, that little signature. Oh <laughs> yeah. This is the one I like. I like this more than the green. This is the one that I tried on at my authorized dealer, this one right here. Um, okay. That's why I thought it was going to be more than 34 because this one retails at 45,000. So, wow, that's quite a bit. All right. Sorry. I don't want to be um, neglecting you guys in the chat here. Simucom reviews that shade of green would look sick, nasty on copper or bronze tone. I think it looks pretty sick, nasty on the gold, the moonshine gold. <laughs> You're having a great week, MM10. I always want to say Marine Master, just out of habit. Um, we'll have a great year for sure. Yeah, that, I mean, good for you. Good for you getting those awesome watches. And this is your favorite of all the announcements today. Mine is still the Aquaterra, personally, but... Um, I mean, I'm not shopping for $35,000 watches that much. If, if I were, 
I'd be all about, you know, this moonshine gold, kind of the panda-ish version. I would like to buy a uh, gold Daytona on Oyster Flex. And even without the bracelet, those are, you know, 30 grand, about a little bit under 30 grand. Uh, but man, I've, I've tried them on in the AD and <laughs> they're awesome. Yeah, I agree. Very beautiful. They've they've done a nice job with that for sure, Genesis. You'll never be able to afford it. I don't I wouldn't say never, man. You just spent like spent a good amount on your watches this week. <laughs> John, John Mayer Speedy. Uh yeah, I kind of see that. I mean, maybe if it had a gold tone bezel, it'd be more John Mayer esque, right? Is it innovation or imitation? That's a great point. Uh, I think a little bit of both. I, and I don't think that's rude to say. I know people kind of get upset when when we say, hey, this brand, they're, they're doing something similar to what Rolex is doing. And I don't know, Rolex is the most successful watch brand on the market. Love that or hate that. Uh, they're often not the first, but they're very imitated. Uh, they're very successful. So um, I think it'd be wise for brands to do similar concepts to what Rolex does, but try to put your own spin and improve upon it and make it available, right? <laughs> not snobbish. Okay, yeah. So I, I, I hope I'm not alone in that because it's nice to make it a little bit different, a little bit more special to those individuals putting down that type of money on a complete luxury item. Do not like the space between the bracelet and the case. Let's take one quick look and then we'll finish up the other novelties. Um, where's the gap? That's a render. Let's take a look at another picture if we can. I, I don't see a gap. Or are you just talking about how the end link looks? It's an inverted end link style. Uh, it makes it very wearable, especially if you have smaller wrists. Um, I, I don't mind it. The, Protruding center link on the previous generation Speedmaster really bumped that lug to lug dimension up. So I think this is more of a, a practical, even though, I don't know, maybe aesthetically it's not as pleasing, but I, I still think it looks pretty good. Omega did what they had to do, I guess. Yeah, I mean, nothing was like super exciting this year from them. And I hold them in pretty high regard. I've always enjoyed every Omega that I've purchased, even though I haven't kept them. Like in my collection right now, I'm looking at it. I'm Omega list. I'm sure that will not always be the case, but, uh, I was slightly underwhelmed this year, I think. Um, but I, you know, it's just my opinion. Maybach says, I think they look fabulous. So, I mean, I'm glad Thomas, Kim. Hey, what's up? Good to see you. And this is a good comment too, from Pierce. I will say this, I appreciate more options in trying something new from Omega. Yeah, the more options, the better. We don't have to buy everything they come out with. They can make some mistakes in learning what works and what doesn't, as long as we have the uh, the choice, right? I think that's better for us as consumers. Yeah, I did. Um, I, I did sell the Moon Watch, but let me explain a little bit and let me minimize this screen. So you guys can see, here's my Black Bay Chronograph from Tudor. This is a, just a great watch. It's very wearable, but still pretty, you know, pretty hefty. Let me throw it on give you guys a wrist shot. So let's see, here it is on my, you know, you can see with my frame, it fits me pretty well. Um, not too tall. I like the screw down function pushers with the rose crown, uh, very solid bracelet. Uh, doesn't taper as much as the new moon watch box crystal really good movement. The B01 base that Tudor modifies, you know, it's a very value rich movement in terms of when you compare it to like a Breitling, like a lot more expensive and arguably not as refined as the edits and tweaks that Tudor makes. So yeah, I bought this and I had it alongside my moon watch for a time and I never wore my moon watch. I never wore it. I always wore this. So yeah, I did sell the moon watch, but here's the thing. I'm not done with the moon watch because I love the moon watch and man, I would love, <laughs> I love this one. Oh, excuse me. I'd love this one for sure. But, um, here's what I'm hoping that Omega does. I'd like to see them do the gray side of the moon, with the meteorite dial, 
the Sedna Gold Accents. I've reviewed that exact watch. Perfect. I love everything about it, but I need that ceramic bracelet. I need it. And as soon as they do that, I mean, that's the Speedmaster for me. It'd be so different whoop, from the Panda that I think they could both coexist. But the basic moon watch and this Panda, I just wasn't wearing the moon watch. And that's something about me. Maybe it's a flaw, but I can't keep something that I don't wear. I'd rather sell it. Not sure if we've discussed this, but I'm stoked for whatever Tudor announces. Yeah, um, I don't know. Are we going to see another Black Bay? Are we going to see the GMT go into the 58 case? Um, I'm not sure what we're going to see from them. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to what Tudor does as well. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be a little bit more exciting than what their elder brother Rolex will do. So, And you're also rocking the Steel Chrono. Awesome. Yeah, it's, a, it's an awesome watch. And yeah, designed by Bruce. So let me explain that real quick. So I did a video like almost a year and a half before this came out where I said, Tudor, make this exact watch. It'll sell really well. I did Photoshop mock-ups and, you know, here we are a year and a half later, they released exactly the watch that I described. And I would put up, you know, a side-by-side -side with my, my computer generate, my uh, render of it and there's my Photoshop versus their render. And it was, it was exact. So I like to say I designed the chrono, but you know, and it could be a coincidence. That is actually a, a stupid idea that I like. I, <laughs> I kind of like that idea. Oh, I, I kind of do, you know, I have a friend that works at a jewelry manufacturing company here in Utah. And I'm actually, I bought some of these pens from Germany, these what are the Kawiko, Kawiko uh, sport watches? And I'm going to engrave my channel name on a couple of them, but um, maybe I should take them a case back for a chrono and just make something stupid like my signature. That, I, that's a good idea. Guys, we're almost at an hour. Um, if you have any questions for me, let me know and we'll talk about it here. I want to be respectful of your time. And Joseph agrees with me. If, it, if you don't wear it, might as well let it go. Let somebody else wear it. Yeah. Um, well, here's the thing. My weight fluctuates so much. I go up and then I, oh man, I'm so fat. I got to lose weight and I get strict and I lose some weight. And I, I, I really do lose a lot in the wrist, as silly as that sounds. Maybe it's water weight but uh, I've been going down recently. So I need to adjust my watches because this is a, this is actually too loose for me. Um, but yeah, I, <laughs> it's called Bruce loose, right? I, I'm just, uh, I need to fix it. Yes. You know, it's called Bruce loose. Yeah. It's a term. Cowboy Swami, what's your thoughts on Swiss companies using hardened sub steel, like the German brands in some models? Um, I, what Swiss companies are doing that right now? Um, cause I know what Damasco does, the ice hardening that hardens the entire, you know, um, thickness of the steel. And then Damasco, they just, they use a carbon diffusion process that just super hardens the outside edge. So it's harder than Damasco's ice hardening, but it's just a thin layer on the top. Uh, yeah, which one is what Swiss brand is doing something similar? Am I missing something off the top of my head? I know some brands are doing coatings, like a Citizen calls a, a super hard clear coating that they used to put only on titanium, but now they're putting it on steel. Seiko's done Dia Shield for a while, and I've never thought that that's been super effective. Um, I mean, 904L steel is, is technically softer, I think, than 316L. Oh, no Swiss brands are doing it. Are, are you saying like, should they start doing it? Well, I like scratch resistant materials and if it can be finished well, I'd love to have more selection as a consumer. But I think right now the German, uh, you know, the German brands that are already doing it are doing a great job with it. And it's not a super premium. I mean, Damasco watches, you can get as low as like 1500 bucks. Zin's a little bit more for their full tegumenting. 
okay, yeah, you want them to. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I just couldn't, uh, <laughs> I was having a disconnect there. I think it would be a good idea if they did. Um, uh, definitely, I'd love more choice. What a rude bunch of people. Are we having trouble in the comments? Uh, let me know and I'll boot people out if we do. Omega's new diver is doing it. Oh, well, let's take a look real quick. I think we did most of the releases. Let's just double check. So Ultra Deep talked about the Seamaster, Aquaterra, Speedmaster, Gold, Constellation. Yeah, we, so we've talked about them all. Let's just go back to the material for the Ultra Deep, and then maybe we'll we'll end the stream here in a couple minutes. So key features that should be probably one of the more prominent features. Oh, there's the side profile, guys. There's the side profile. Let's take a look. That is a thick watch. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Looks kind of awesome, though, don't you think? Yeah, that is a thick watch. Okay, so Omega Steel. Man, that's a silly name. Silly name. Omega, Omega Steel. Oh, my goodness. A high-performance stainless steel alloy notable for its advanced strength, wider color, excellent corrosion resistance, and incompatible shine. So what is it, 904L steel? It's They're just it, describing the same qualities as 904L steel. I wonder if it's the same compound because Rolex does not have a monopoly on 904L steel. They call it, what is it, oyster steel now, which is another dumb name, but oh, mega steel, <laughs> mega steel. Oh, that's a silly name. It doesn't say that it's harder in terms of scratch resistance. Uh, and then Seiko is doing the what? The ever brilliant steel, which is wider color, corrosion resistant, great, you know, uh, holds a good shine. I think more brands are just kind of going toward the 904L route. And the back is grade five titanium. Yeah, that's that's nothing new. The deep sea does that. Um, the full titanium model, sandblasted. Okay, Rob, you are right. These are not liar style lugs. They're calling them manta lugs because of the shape of the lugs, kind of like a manta ray. Good call. Yeah, I, I don't see any extra hardened properties that they're advertising. I think it's just the tone of the steel and how bright and pretty it is. Not that 316L steel is... is uh, susceptible for corrosion. I mean, it's stainless steel, but 904L stainless steel can um, withstand a little bit more than 316L. So I would assume that this is a, an alloy that's very similar to 904L steel. And I wonder if it's even more scratch prone than 316L. 1500 Vickers? I didn't see that. Are you talking about Zen or are you talking about the... Uh, Omega steel. <laughs> I don't think it's hardened steel. Built like a tank. Yeah, it sure is. They are. It is. It is kind of like a, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to one up you. Look what I can do. 6,000 meters. Boom. Beat that. No healing release wart. BT in their defense. Omega has done quite a lot these past few years with movements. New Seamaster 300 pro new speedies, new Aquaterras, Globemaster. Yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned this earlier, but we can get kind of a persnickety and we can complain a lot. I think that's something that <laughs> watch enthusiasts will never fail to do. But you're right. They have done a lot of really great stuff. And I'd love to see that new Seamaster 300. I've, I've seen it in the authorized dealer, but I haven't, you know, got one in hand yet to review. And I'd love to do that because, you know, the the sandwich dial, um, the full loomed bezel, uh, the bracelet, the taper, the adjustable clasp. I think that's a really sharp, the lollipop second sand, that's a really sharp model. Um, I do enjoy the new Speedy. They have done quite a bit. That's that's a good point. Now let's not get carried away here. Okay, Cowboy Swami, you're talking about Zen. Yeah. And Vulcan Pro. Hey, I appreciate that. That's really kind of you. Uh, if you have a question or a comment, you know, put it in the chat. I'd be happy to spend a couple minutes on it. Amit says the red bezel literally reminds me of a transformer. Um, 
I don't know what they call this color. It's 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 more of an orangey. It's like a it's like a blood orange if you guys are familiar with that fruit. Uh, and I love it on the white dial Planet Ocean 40 43 millimeter um 600 meter water resistant. That one full lumed bezel that is about the dang coolest diver that Omega's done in my opinion. But it looks like they've got the same color here on this ultra deep and I don't think they've named the color of the orange or the red, but it's it's like a blood orange. It's a really attractive uh, rust color. Your review of the silver and off-white Aquaterra small seconds on rubber makes me want to call Brent. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you what, if if they had if Brent Hill Miller had sent me that slate gray small seconds. I think I probably would have bought that and I would have been mad at myself because then I wouldn't have bought the show show. And I'm so glad I bought the show show. Uh, it's such a stunning piece. And I've been wearing nothing but this since I got it until today, just because I, I, uh, you know, picked up the Panerai for a review from a buddy of mine locally. Yeah, that's a good comment. The, Certanium is sick on IWC. I'll have to look that up. Let's just do a quick Google. You got my interest peak because I love IWC. Is it just their uh, a blend of ceramic titanium? So it's lightweight and scratch resistant, uh, I'm assuming. Features. And it doesn't look like they talk too much about it. Let's look at the case. Ceratinium. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it's just coated titanium, right? Kind of like a Cerakote. If the, if that's the case, that's dang cool. Really cool. <laughs> you can wear it on your leg since it's 45 and a half. The Ultra Deep is a big watch. Definitely. And I saw one really good comment I wanted to try to highlight real quick from Mr. Godiva. Omega has taken advantage of the non-Rolex availability. I totally agree. And I don't think it's exclusive with Omega. I think other brands are enjoying a nice boost in, in sales. Um, I know, I think Cartier just passed Omega recently and that kind of surprising. I know they were third for many years, but they've been doing really, really well. Um, I know Breitling has been gaining market share. Uh, I, ha I haven't seen the sales figures, but it looks like Zenith is doing better and Grand Seiko has been doing better. I think people have this, you know, uh, desire to buy these lovely pieces. Maybe they've dreamed about, and now they have the discretionary income to do so. Uh, but the fact that, uh, you know, Rolex is, is unobtainium for a lot of us, it's pushing people toward these other awesome brands. And that's not a bad thing, I think, definitely. And Gianni agrees with you, uh, Steve. Oh, what did you say? Okay, Th let's highlight this one. I wish the Green Seamaster became sort of a flagship watch this year with an 8900 and taper. Bra yeah, it needs a taper bracelet. And I would take an 8900 or an 8912 or 8800 at any day of the week. So... Thomas Kim, oh, man, yeah, so nice of you guys. Thank you very much. Very generous. Um, I know you've been on the chat for a while, but if you have a question, Thomas, put it in the chat. Let's talk about it. Thank you. Okay, so the IWC is just a ceramic and titanium blend. Good to know. Amit says the new Speedy 57 is absolutely gorgeous. The blue one likes the blue transitional dial. Yeah. And I'm with you, Nick. The green and gold speedy looks sick. I like the I like the uh the gold dial one too with the black accents and, and registers. I think that's gonna be so cool in person. Yeah, I hope so too. So um I've been texting with Brad a little bit and I want it just depends on what their store gets in, Brent Hill Miller Jewelers. If if they get in a good amount. And obviously, if they're not spoken for, I know some people get really excited and they they call up and they say, hey, first one of this that you get, I'm a buyer. That sometimes can happen, but he's going to try to do his best to hold some watches uh, if possible. It just depends on what they get and whatnot. 
But I, I'm I'm totally agreeing with you. I hope we can see a majority of these when we're in the store next month on the 14th. Okay, so about the steel, it's different from 904 and 316L. It's harder 300 Vickers than 316L, so about twice as hard. I want to say 316L stainless steel is, uh, wasn't it like 300, 350 Vickers? And Omega used 904L with the 70s diver era. Yeah, other brands have, have used 904L. Um, again, it's not exclusive to Rolex. But uh, that's good to know. So it, it sounds like the new Omega Steel, <laughs> that's such a silly name, is going to be harder than 316L. And that's nice to know. So thanks for uh, for sharing that, Javier. All right, guys, we've gone over an hour here. We've talked about... We're we're on a we're on IWC. We've we've talked about the different releases. Personally, my favorite is the colorful Aqua Terras in 38 millimeters. Not perfect. I'd love to have seen you know uh, an adjustable clasp. I'd love to see the 8912 in there. Uh, color match date will probably, but I think on the whole, I think they're going to look really good. I'd love to see the full gold Moon Watch in person. I'm not shopping that watch right now. If I'm, you know, honest, when I drop 30 grand on a watch, it'll probably be a Daytona on Oyster Flex, or it would be a used Longa One or something with an amazing complication. I don't know that it would be a Speedmaster. I'm wait again. I'm waiting for that ceramic Seamaster. Yeah, Ball does use 904. That, that's a good point. They they sure do. Cowboy Swami, hey, thanks for tuning in today. I appreciate it. Great comments. Thank you very much, guys. Why don't we... Uh... Oh, dude, thank you. I appreciate it. You guys are really, really kind. You were planning to go to meet, but you got family commitments. Hey, no worries. We're going to try to make this a regular thing. I did it last year in May. This year, it's in April. I'd love to do it with other areas. Like if I come out to California for a 49ers game, I'd love to see if there's an authorized dealer like Topper or or someone that would want to host us. Or I mean, we don't have to go to an AD. We could uh, we could meet up somewhere else. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to meet you too and, and get together. So I appreciate it. BT, you're the man. Thank you very much. Uh, Steve, dinner time. Yeah, go, go eat some good food. I'll see if I can come out to Cali sometime. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you guys are awesome. Have a great evening and uh, I'll talk to you later.